to BeYourMinistry.com to another blog and another podcast. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 18, verses 6 through 9, which reads, So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. That's Genesis chapter 18, verses 6 through 9. Today we return to our study of Genesis 18 where the Lord Jesus himself has just appeared to Abraham along with two angels. After Abraham recognized that it was the Lord, he invited him and the two angels with him to stay for a short while and enjoy an afternoon snack with him under the terebinth trees at Mamre. Today's passage provides for us a picture of the heart that has experienced circumcision. In Philippians chapter 3, in verse 3, we read, We are the true circumcision, who worship God in spirit and glory in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh. Abraham was led by the Spirit of God through many difficulties and trials, and after years of wandering in a state of alternating victory and defeat, he had come into the fullness of the circumcised life, which is a life defined by God's grace. In verse 6 of today's passage, we read, So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham was so excited about his guests and their promise to stay and enjoy a snack with him, that he hurried into his tent. You'll remember that at this point, Abraham was 99 years old, and he was so elated to serve the one who intercepted his life. Abraham's words to Sarah were as urgent as his steps into the tent. He told her to quickly make ready three measures of fine meal. Abraham told Sarah to provide them with cakes, which were not just a morsel of bread, as he previously offered. Instead, it was about three times as much as each of their visitors could have eaten in an entire day. Despite being humble about his offering, the bread alone was truly a banquet fit for a king, and there was more to come. In verse 7 of today's passage, we read, And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. It was at this point that Abraham pulled out of his flock a very tender and good calf. Abraham gave to the Lord his absolute best. This is what a life that is being trained by the grace of God does. It sacrifices out of love. When we find ourselves being defined by love, we will love. When we are in love, sacrifice becomes more important than our convenience and our comfort. Sometimes our sacrifices are small. Other times they're big. Nonetheless, every person we meet in life should be a candidate for our love, for the one who redeemed us. Another quiet lesson learned in this passage is, in order to live, something must die. The only thing that can overcome death is life. In order for sinful man to live, the Lord Jesus had to overcome death. Without the cross of Christ, sinful man would remain spiritually dead and in our sins. 
but he died on the cross to take sin and death down on our behalf. He won that battle as evidenced by his resurrection. Anyone willing enough to believe in him as Savior, God promises he will be saved for eternity. In verse 8 of today's passage, we read, So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree as they ate. This was quite a bit more than a morsel of bread which Abraham had promised them. Biblical scholars tell us that Abraham made a meal which was more than two bushels, weighing nearly 56 pounds. Abraham not only brought out his finest and best, he brought out much more than was needed. Abraham gave the best of what he had, and he gave it in abundance, and he was not coerced. He did it because he had been the recipient of God's love. In the customs of the Middle East, it wasn't considered at all menial for the head of a household to prepare and serve a meal like this. It would have been a breach of respect for him to sit and eat with them as well. Instead, Abraham stood ready to attend to any and every need the visitors might have had. Here, Abraham was not only known by his faith, he was also known by his deeds and actions. This is the way it works. Once we have been made right with God through justification, as a result of getting to know God for who he is, we will want to give ourselves to him. This is known in the Bible as sanctification. Justification is a one-time event when we trust in God's goodness and promise through Christ for salvation. And sanctification is an ongoing process wherein we learn to die to self, and we are learning to be defined by our Savior. In verse 9 of today's passage, we read, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. It was out of this context that the Lord asked about Sarah's whereabouts. This question reveals that this occasion was actually about Sarah. Only the Lord knew of Sarah's recent name change, and this is why he asked, where is Sarah? Abraham had already been defined by God's grace as evidence by his heart of servanthood, but Sarah had been on the fringes of this unfolding narrative. So in the providence of God, Sarah came into focus as the lens was directed towards her. The Lord directed attention to Sarah when he asked for her by name. This could only mean that his visit was about Sarah the whole time, and the formalities of their culture led them to this very important question. Where is Sarah? This narrative frames up what our lives are truly about. The saved person's existence is wrapped up in the phrase, to know him and to make him known. God had worked in Abraham's life in such a way that he experienced intimacy with God. And now the Lord looked to offer that same type of intimacy with him to Sarah. What makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. Stay tuned to tomorrow's study to see where this narrative leads us. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of assistance to you any further, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail. Hey, have a great day.